After studying this module, you shall be able to understand the meaning and importance of innovation in current business environment, the types and sources of innovation, the best practices for successful implementation of innovation strategy, the meaning and importance of innovation management. Innovation in the current business environment. A business exists to satisfy consumers in a profitable manner. This objective seems quite simple to practice. However, practicing this humble objective is extremely difficult in the current business environment. Global competition, global slowdown, increased consumer selectivity and new guidelines and norms, example environmental protection standards have made the task of the business more challenging than ever. Still, there are companies which have defied the laws of economic gravity and achieved success. It is obvious to ask how such companies are different from others. Let's search the answer of this question. This will further help us to understand the importance of innovation in the current business environment. A company cannot succeed in the long run with the same offering. New product planning and development are crucial for its success. However, developing truly new products at regular intervals is not easy. It needs deliberate efforts to formulate and practice innovation strategy backed by sufficient financial and able human resources. Innovation can bring more avenues of opportunities for the company if innovation and trends are recognized well before the competitors can do. This will enable the company to proactively engage in a state of continuous search for the need of the market. This way, innovate or die would be the best appropriate strategy for every organization to stay and succeed in the current dynamic market. Innovation has become the crucial ingredient in strategies for creating new market and sustaining company growth. Next is the meaning of innovation. Innovation is the process of transforming an idea or an invention into a market offering, which create value and for which customer is willing to pay. For innovation, an idea must be applicable at the most economical cost and must satisfy the needs and expectations of customers. It comes through the new combinations which are made by the entrepreneur and resulting in a new product or new process, the opening of new market, new ways of organizing the business and new sources of supply. According to Peter Drucker, innovations are specific function of entrepreneurship, whether in an existing business, a public service institution or a new venture started by a lone individual in the family kitchen. It is the means by which the entrepreneur either creates new wealth producing resources or endows existing resources with enhanced potential for creating wealth. This definition emphasizes that there is always scope for innovation irrespective of the type and size of institution. Not just profit making entities, non-profit and government organizations like NGOs hospitals, universities, civic societies, etc. can enhance their potential to serve the society in a better way. Also, it is not necessary that every innovation needs huge investment. Many times, scarcity of capital drives company to be innovative. What is more important is organization's commitment and struggle with itself to serve better and better. In other words, Innovation should be treated as a way of life. Frugal innovation. Narayana Hirdiala attempt to provide low-cost heart surgeries. Narayana Hirdiala, a Bangalore-based low-cost cardiac care, is one of the perfect examples of Indian frugal innovations. Devi Prasad Shetty, cardiac surgeon and the founder of Narayana Hirdiala says, innovations have to be affordable. A magic pill will not do. The hospital is building a chain of hospitals that will carry out heart surgeries at the cheapest rates in the world. The 200-bed 
1.5 lakh square foot Narayana Hirdeala Hospital set up with an investment of about rupees 45 crore. This makes it 80% cheaper than any similar multi-speciality facilities built on same size. It has sought new ways to cut cost. In place of marbles and expensive furniture, it has used simple tiles, low-cost seating and prefabricated structures. The hospital bought low-cost medical equipment from small Indian firms and having a pay-per-use model for expensive equipment to reduce the capital expenditure. Furthermore, it is also trying to reduce the electricity bills by better use of natural light and absence of elevators and air conditioning. In a country where 2.5 million heart surgeries are required every year, however, only 90,000 are performed. Narayana Hirdeala efforts to provide heart care services at the lowest cost without compromising with the quality of treatment is a wonderful act of serving the society. Innovation can be divided broadly into two categories. First, evolutionary innovation. Evolutionary innovation is also called continuous innovation. It brings many incremental advances and benefits in processes or technology. It has emerged basically from practice. The second is revolutionary innovation. Revolutionary innovation emerge generally from R&D and of disruptive nature. There are also called discontinuous innovation. Next is the interdisciplinary views. First, business and economics. Innovation is the catalyst to growth. Entrepreneurs looking for better ways to satisfy customers' need with improved quality, service, price and durability with advanced and new technology. Second, organization. In organizational context, innovation is related to positive changes in efficiency, quality, competitiveness, productivity and market share. Third, social. In the social context, an innovation helps to create new methods for alliance creation, flexible work hours, joint venturing and creation of purchasing power of buyers. Next is the sources of innovation. There is no consensus on what should drive innovation. A section of management thinkers and successful entrepreneurs believe that technology drives innovation. Steve Jobs of Apple Inc. once said that it isn't the customer's job to know what they want. This approach can bring prosperity for many. However, it also involves risk. A company focusing only on technological breakthrough for innovation can develop a product which nobody wants. For example, the Segway human transporter is truly an innovative battery-powered one-person scooter. The product is aimed at commercial customers in the US. However, its acceptance has been limited. This practice is useful when the main goal is to innovate. In such situation, one has to look to technology for opportunities to disrupt the current playing field. However, for most of the companies, business success is the main goal which depends on how well they understand and anticipate customers' need and brings the right product to cater those needs. Therefore, for them, it is crucial that innovation lines up with a critical customer problem that no one has solved. There are many sources of innovation. It can be the result of major system failure, by chance and effort by different uncontrollable agents. It can be sourced from external market triggers or from within the company. According to Peter F. Drucker, the general sources of innovation are different changes in market structure, industry structure, local and global demographics, in human perception, mood and meaning, in the amount of already available scientific knowledge, etc. The robotics engineer Joseph F. Angelberger said that innovation requires a recognized need, competent people with relevant technology and financial support. For example, the employees of Google work on their projects for 20% of their time, which is known as innovation time off. Atlassian, a software tool company, conducts quarterly shift days 
in which employees can do anything which is related to the product of the company. Next is the link of innovation with goals and failure of organization. Innovative programs are linked to organizational growth objectives. According to Devela et al, companies cannot grow only through cost reduction and re-engineering. Innovation is very important element in providing aggressive top line growth and for increasing bottom line results. Failures are also possible in innovation programs. Causes of failures can be internal or external to organization. Internal causes are controllable while external causes are uncontrollable. The general causes of the failures are poor definition of goals, poor team's participation and poor alignment of the actions, poor communication and access to the information and poor monitoring of results. Now we will discuss upon the innovation index. There are many indices exist which attempt to measure the innovation. Some of them are as follows. First, the innovation index. It is developed by Indiana Business Research Center which measures the innovation capacity in the countries of the United States. Second, the State Technology and Science Index. It is developed by the Milken Institute US benchmark which measure science and technology capabilities. Third, the Oslo Manual. It focuses on Europe, North America. Fourth, the Bogota Manual. It focuses on Latin America and Caribbean countries. Fifth, the Global Innovation Index. The Global Innovation Index measures the level of innovation of a country developed by the Boston Consulting Group, the National Association of Manufacturers and the Manufacturing Institute. Other indices are Creative Class Innovation Capacity Index, NSEED Global Innovation Index, etc. Now we will discuss upon the type of innovation, namely the 4P. Innovation is always in the eye of the beholder. What is new for one may be old for another person. John Besant and Joe Tidd developed the 4P's model which is based on the hypothesis that innovation is about positive change. They suggested four categories where such changes can take place. These are as follows. First, product innovation. It is the very common form of innovation which includes the changes or improvements in the product or services which the organization offers to its end users. For example, big ballpoint pens. Second, process innovation. It includes the changes in the process through which product or services are created or delivered. For example, stockpiling of goods in the strategic location. Third, position innovation. It includes repositioning the perception of a product or process in the specific context. For example, Levi's jeans originally developed as manual workers clothing material, which is now rebranded as a fashion item. Fourth, paradigm innovation. The final P relates to the change in understanding mental models which shape what an organization is about. It redefines dominant paradigm of the organization or the entire sector. For the development of the model, T motor car Henry Ford said a pithy quote, if I asked people what they want, they would have asked for a five-legged horse. Fourth is the Rogers Innovation Adoption Model. E.M. Rogers developed diffusion of innovation theory in 1962. This theory explains that how over the time an idea or a product gains, diffuses, spread and momentum through a special system or the specific population. Diffusion's end result is that people adopt the new idea, product or behavior. Adoption can be defined as a person does something different than what he had previously which means use or purchase a new product or service and perform new behavior. In a social system, adoption of a new idea, product or behavior or we can say innovation process where some people are more apt in adopting an innovation than the others. Now, the people who can adopt innovation early have different behavior and characteristics than the people who adopt it later. To promote 
innovation in the target market, it is necessary to know the characteristics of target population. Because marketers use different strategies to the different categories of adopters. There are five adopter categories while the majority of the population fall in middle categories. These are as follows. First, innovators known as risk takers. Innovators are first in purchasing the new product. They are 2.5% of the total purchase of new product. They purchase in the beginning of a product's life cycle. They are not afraid to try new products as it suit their lifestyle. Second, early adopters known as hedgers. The second group of purchasers is called early adopters which are 13.5% of purchases. They adopt early but only after the careful thought. They are generally the leaders in their family or friend circle. Therefore, the success of new product depends upon them. Third, early majority known as waiters. They are cautious purchasers which make up 34% of the sales. When the product becomes socially acceptable, only then they buy that product. Fourth, late majority known as captives. These are 34% of the purchases. They are more cautious than early majority and generally purchases at the late stage of product life cycle. They buy only after the majority of the population have purchased that product. Fifth, legards known as slowpox. The last group of purchasers of a product is legards. They comprises 16% of the total sales of the product. They wait till it become cheaper and but at the end of the product's life cycle. Now we will discuss upon the factors affecting the rate of adoption of an innovation. How an adopter perceives the characteristics of an innovation has impact on process of adoption. There are five major factors which affect the rate of adoption. Let's consider the characteristics of HDTVs in relation to adoption rate. First, relative advantage. It is the degree to which innovation perceived better than the idea it supersedes. Greater the relative advantage, more rate on the rate of adoption of innovation. For example, HDTVs offer improved picture quality with speed adoption rate. Second, compatibility. It is the degree to which innovation perceived as consistent with existing values and past experiences and also needs of the potential adopters. HDTVs are highly compatible with the lifestyle of TV watching public. However, there are many channels which are not available in HD and hence slow down the rate of adoption. Third, complexity. It is the degree to which innovation perceived as different to use and understand. HDTVs are not much complex. Fourth, triability. It is the degree to which innovation may be tried or experimented on a limited basis. It convinces those people who are risk averse. Earlier, HDTVs, their cable satellite systems were expensive, which slow down the adoption rate. Once the prices fall, adoption rate will increase. Fifth, observability. It is degree to which results of the innovation are visible to people. Innovation is more likely to adopt by individual if its benefits are easier to see. HDTV itself lends to demonstration and description which helps in spreading its use among consumers. Now we will discuss upon the ideal practices for the successful implementation of innovation strategy. Successful companies adopt the following practices to implement the innovation strategy. First, make innovation a continuous process. As we all know, nothing grows forever. The best products, business models and markets all go through a cycle of growth, maturity and decline often depicted as an S-curve. Once the product is introduced in the market, competition emerges, price war begins and soon market gets saturated. Once the reality of the S curve becomes evident, it may be too late to design the next growth strategy. Therefore, the best companies make innovation a continuous process. Second, understand your customers. Successful growth companies have a deep understanding of their customers' problems. 
this closeness provide them clues and direction for future innovation many such companies are embracing tools such as the customer empathy map to uncover new opportunities to create value third be a designer innovation involves creating new options and bringing new ideas this is where traditional managers struggle as they are trained to make choices and are risk averse this is where designers excel the new breed of strategists have abandoned porter's five forces analysis as it assumes that market have well defined boundaries and competitors must fight for market share fourth lead the way innovation is possible only when the top management makes it a priority continuous innovation requires risk taking attitude and capacity to bear the cost of failure which is impossible without executive air cover therefore it is important to create a culture of innovation where innovative thinking is promoted and innovative ideas are rewarded adopting these four best practices can help companies to drive innovation and growth next is innovation management the business environment is rapidly changing and therefore it is very crucial to manage innovation effectively to stay competitive innovation management can be defined as the management of innovation processes which include product as well as organizational innovation it encompasses a set of tools which allow engineers and managers to cooperate with a common understanding of the processes and goals of the business this way it allows external opportunities and challenges to and use its ability to introduce new products and ideas according to william g pollard american physicist said without change there is no innovation creativity or incentive for improvement those who initiate change will have a better opportunity to manage the change that is inevitable innovation management describes decisions practices and activities which move an idea to realization for the purpose of generating the business value it manages the investment so that new opportunities can be created innovation investment generally focus on new products services and technological developments this will help in generating the customer value that is needed for growth and sustainability of the business innovation management is not just related to research and development but also involves employees at every level in contributing to the company's product development manufacturing and marketing also innovation management tools include brainstorming product life cycle management virtual prototyping idea management project management product line planning trends and portfolio management next are the requirements for managing innovation to have an innovative framework is a key component for effective change that increases the capability of business to generate the customer value the decision making process is the critical part of this framework which is used to funnel the long list of potential ideas down to the critical few one that will deserve investments often this kind of investments are considered to be the part of overall investment portfolio decisions innovation is needed for renewal constant change and it affects all areas of business we know that change is always resisted therefore necessitating appropriate incentive and rewards to promote the needed innovation many enduring innovations require the long term investments hence if innovative environment is to be sustained then it should be the part of organizational decision making approach innovation process is often required for the long term competitive advantages that will lead to the generation of intellectual property next are the benefits which come from managing innovation Innovation management is very important for a sustainable business. Some benefits of doing it well are as follows. First, it improves the timing for the market introduction. Second, it has the ability to maintain and improve business margins. Third, it helps to increase the market share. Fourth, it helps in achieving long-lasting and improve competitive advantage. Fifth, 
it improves the customer satisfaction. Sixth, it also increases the shareholders return. Next are the phases of an innovation management process. Innovation management process is essential part of operations of many organizations and to accomplish this one has to set the innovation activities. The phases of the innovation management process are as follows. First, setting the goals for the process. Innovation always starts with a goal in your mind which is based on finding solution to a problem. Once you have a goal, this should be discussed with everyone who is in a problem solving team. The team may include fellow employees, customers or any other stakeholder. There should be someone who represents the entire process from beginning to end. Next, cooperation. The team should work together so that they can create collaborative solution. This includes the use of online tools, brainstorming session or attending events like trade shows which are inspiring and also informative. Many online tools are very helpful for sharing documents among team members who are geographically separated. Third, combination of ideas. Once there are many ideas then choose which is the best one and if it is possible combine the ideas to create greater idea and better results. Next, evaluation of innovation. After combining and polishing the best ideas, they evaluate on peer review basis. This identifies the poor ideas before funding and time devoted to them. It also helps to choose the ideas which have great potential. It's very cheap to change an innovation at this stage. Forward to it, this will cost you more. Fifth, testing the ideas. After identifying the greatest potential ideas, they are being tested to improve them or to remove if there is any flaw. This is done with the help of prototype or test groups. This allows team, customer and investor to have a better look at the function of producing and which further improvements can be done. Sixth, execution of innovation implementation. If the initial testing of the ideas are successful, they can be executed as the part of the business. Some modification or alteration can be made to improve or remove any minor flaw. Here, it is important to keep customers in the mind while modifying the product. 7. Assessment of innovation life cycle After the execution, its implementation is monitored very carefully and also assessed in terms of milestones which have been set already. If organization does not reach to milestones, then changes are to be made to the desired results. This cycle of idea generation to execution and then assessment goes on continuously. Summary Innovation has become the critical ingredient in strategies for creating new markets and sustaining company growth. Successful products can in the future most likely be expected from those companies which successfully organize continuous innovation keeping in mind the key factors like customer's demand and market condition. It results from ideas if they are implemented in new product, services and process which find real usage and thus penetrate the market. However, it is not necessary that innovation always have to be completely new ideas. Rather, it means the implementation of something new which results in a noticeable improvement for the user. For achieving success in business, it is important that the innovation should line up with a critical customer problem that no one has solved. And for this, a company must manage its innovation processes efficiently. Innovation management describes decisions, practices and activities which move an idea to realization for the purpose of generating the business value.